I think that day should work. Yes, but first, let me check my calendar. Please hold on. Thank you. Hello? You just sat to the right? 6 p.m.? Oh, that's a perfect day. Yeah, that should work. But let me talk to my wife first. Uh, just let me know whether that day will work for our schedule. But, um... Yeah, yeah, I'll call you back. Yes, as soon as possible. Thank you. All right, bye. Babe, that was the guy from the agency. He has finally gotten us a hall for the church. And he wants us to come for the showing. Um, I just want to know whether uh, next Saturday we work for you. Paul, why are you telling me this? You should know I can't go to any showing with you because I didn't agree to start anything with you. You had the calling, so my husband, you're on your own. Lola, please. I will never be fulfilled in this country without being a pastor. I know we agreed to start a new life afresh here, but Lola, Holy Spirit won't let me rest. God has been nudging my head so strongly. I just have to obey. You know, I cannot do anything without this. I can't do anything without you. It is important, please. Don't you dare preach to me. Why are you so selfish and inconsiderate? All you think about is yourself and yourself alone. Listen to me. Paul Benga Williams. I did not relocate to the United States to come and pastor a church. I did not do that. We barely spent six months in this country. And you already you're talking about pastoring a church. I'm highly disappointed. Don't you realize that there are better things we're supposed to focus on right now? Besides tending to the flock. Things like what? Like having more children. I want to have more children. Paul, please. I'm tired. We're supposed to be focusing on other things right now. We need to try and give testimony, siblings, even if it's just one. I can't, I can't pastor, I, I can't pastor a church with you right now. I came into this country so I can focus on me. Focus on our marriage and focus on our family. Babe, I understand. We can still try for more children, even if, even if you have a church. I knew you were going to say that. Look, if you want to go ahead with this decision, you're on your own. I'm done. I'm done pastoring a church. So if you want to do it, you're on your own. Lola. 
Lola, please. What is it? I've said my bit about this issue. Please, let's go. Beautiful. You wouldn't believe it, we had a great turnout today. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, yes. And it is marvelous in our eyes. I think my secretary is on the line. Please, just hold on. Just hold on. Hello? Yeah, Angela. I want you to work on those files and they must come to my table tomorrow morning first thing. Once you're done with them, you can go home. I'll lock up. No problem. Yeah, brother, I'm with you. So how's everything going? Well, bless God. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Now straight to business. We're talking. Lady Evangelist Lola Williams. Mommy D. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I had to see some people. Oh no, that's okay. I understand how these things go. <laughs> what am I even saying? You are a first lady yourself and you know how busy it can be sometimes. <laughs> I know. I thought I asked you, why aren't you taking anything? I asked the secretary to bring you some refreshments. Mm, no, I asked him not to bother since we're still going to your house. So, oh, yeah, okay. I asked him not to bother, but he's been very hospitable. Yes, he is. He's one of our faithful workers here in church. Yeah. And how was the service? Did you like it today? Were you blessed? I was absolutely blessed. That was a great message. Ah, Mommy D, you never fail to deliver. It's so good to see that you're still the same firebrand sister that I met 15 years ago back in campus. All glory to God. Amen. Is he who works in us to his will and to do his good pleasures. I can't believe it's been so long we've been apart from each other. And mm. I just thank God for preserving our lives mm. and reuniting us back together. I know God has been faithful. God has been faithful. While the men are catching up on old times, let's do some talking too. Let's talk about you and Pastor Paul. How have you been? How has life been? I, we were so excited when he called to inform us you were moving to the States. <laughs> My sister, God has been faithful. You know how tiring and demanding mission work can be. The last 15 years felt like an eternity. It was really hard. But I thank God that the Lord has released us from mission work right now. I can imagine. <laughs> I remember then when you told us God had called you to the mission field. <laughs> you know we were new converts ourselves. Mm -hmm. We were so scared. My husband and I, we were so scared. <laughs> My God. We were so naive because we, we just couldn't understand why a newly married couple, a young one at that, a newly married couple would leave their well-paying jobs from England to Accra, all in the name of mission work. Ah. <laughs> but see how God works, see how He cornered us. Here we are today, heading a church of over 300 Ooh. members. <laughs> God has been really awesome. God has been awesome. Ah. He is. <laughs> he is. His ways are absolutely not ours. Come to think of which, have you and Pastor Paul started thinking of where or when to implement the church? Because my husband and I were 
talking yesterday, we were trying to consider where a church could try. Did Paul put you up to this? Put me up to what? <laughs> Andrew, hmm? I really need you and Mommy D to speak to her. She's not cooperating with me at all. I can't start a church without her. When the Lord told me to hand over the church we built for 15 years to my assistant, I thought it was a joke. But when he opened the door to relocate here, that made me to realize that he has greater things in store for us. Hmm. I see. But the thing is, the sister Lola that I knew would never have objected to the calling of God upon your life. I, I remember those days when we were in Birmingham together. Whenever he came to soul winning, Sister Lola never gave no for an answer. She was ready to follow the Lord all the way. <sighs> I've been doing some thinking. Just wondering why she will be objecting now. Can there be a reason why she's objecting now? Why do you think she, she's objecting to your calling now? See, the major reason is she wants us to focus more on our marriage and our son. She wants us to have more children, which I, 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 I also understand because age is, on, is not on our side. The truth is, She's tired of wearing the pastor's heart, especially because of the challenges we faced in Accra. Come to think of it, I, I reason with her. It makes sense, that, that makes sense to focus on the marriage but, hmm. and the family, yes. But, I, I, yes, because in the early years of your marriage. You guys had, had the call very early and um, you had to leave Birmingham to go and establish a church in Accra. It was challenging and I reasoned with her that by now she will be tired of just changing sporadically, moving from one location to the other. I reasoned with her. That man is not serious. Look, Mommy D, I don't know what my husband told you and Pastor. But I've already made it clear to him. I'm not pastoring a church with him anymore. Hmm. So it's true. What is wrong, Lola? Your husband said you won't allow him to start a church here. Why? There's nothing wrong. I just don't feel led in my spirit to continue with mission work with him. We've been doing that for the past 15 years. I'm tired. I need a break. I need to catch up on life. This is really shocking coming from you. You know, you used to be very passionate about the people of God. Because back when we were in college, you had this fire, this passion about God's work and winning souls for Christ. It is this same passion that has brought you to where you are today. Remember then also, that people started calling you an evangelist even way before you got called into mission work. Mommy D, look. I just feel like I'm missing out on a lot of things. I feel like I'm missing out in life. Ministry is all I know. Ministry is all I do. Look. I'm not trying to make any comparisons here. But when we finished in school years ago, you went ahead to become a medical doctor. So you're not only a pastor, you're also a medical doctor. <laughs> I had my own dreams too, you know. But the last time I checked, I abandoned it on the altar of sacrifice just because we got called into ministry work. You know what gladdens my heart? The fact that you said God called us. I so thank God you realize that God called you both into ministry. And you know, 
Life is very ironic. Two years ago, Lola, I, I sought the face of God because I felt like it was okay for me to join my husband in full-time ministry. But God wouldn't have it. He told me that he had a purpose for me, had an assignment for me in the health field. So you see, his plans and purposes for our lives are so different. And he also has his ways of weaving us around his plans. <sighs> Mommy D. But the ministry work is so hard. I can't, I can't explain it. The demonic oppressions was so much. I lost six pregnancies before the Lord gave us our son five years ago. You know, when the doors of this country opened up to us, I felt like it was compensating us for all our sacrifices. Right now, I just want, I want to catch up on my life. Go back to school. Get my master's degree. Have more children. Just serve God quietly. Not open up a church and pastor, uh, pastoring, pastoring a church. Eh? See what Paul is trying to do to me. Besides, it's hard to pastor a church in a country like this. It's going to require more sacrifice than it did back in Africa. Honestly, I don't think I have it in me to commit to that call right now. This is not just a call, Lola. It is a call with a purpose, a unique purpose. God has called your husband. He hasn't left you out of the call. He has extended his hand to you as well. Just like God did with Abraham and Sarai and changed their names to fill his purpose just so they go hand in hand. I, f I strongly believe he's doing the same with you. I don't know. Right now, I'm just... I'm just... It's just going to be by his grace. I'm going to need your help, God. My brother, what can I do now? I have a call which I must answer. But I'm just trusting God to convince Lola so that she knows that this is a call that we cannot but to answer. Hmm. I quite understand you. But you need to give her more time. She'll definitely come around. I told Mommy D to speak to her, and I believe the Lord will put the right words in her mouth in handling this. At this point in time, I want to encourage you to keep praying for her. My wife and I will be praying for both of you, and the Lord is going to do wonders in your marriage. Everything you need concerning this call, the Lord is going to perfect. Amen. And I pray you're going to have more children. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my brother. Any day. I guess the ladies should be done by now. Let's check on them. All right. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. After you. All right. God bless you. Ladies, we're, re we're ready whenever you are. We're ready to serve. <laughs> Excellent. Then let's go. God bless you. So deep the depth of love, so high the height of mercy. Oh. 
walk as free.